Hello, everybody. My name is Amr Asher. I am the Assistant Director of Research at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society, and also part of the Secretariat for the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. And I'm really excited to talk with Angela Daly and Oles Andrichuk of the Strathclyde Center for Internet Law and Policy based in Glasgow in the UK. I'm so pleased to have you both on the call to talk more about the center and would love to just hear a little bit more from you about what the focus of the center is, about the center, who's involved in it, um, and what topics you're working on. Uh, yeah, thanks um, so much, Amr, for um, having us. Uh, so we, we are a new center, but we're also an old center. Um, so the Strathclyde Center for Internet Law and Policy actually has been around for a while, um, but it was kind of laying dormant for a few years at least. And both Oles and I recently joined Strathclyde um, about a year, 18 months, two years ago maximum. Um, so since we both joined, uh, we decided to kind of revive the center and you're kind of seeing its current incarnation is quite new. So we've only really been around uh, in this kind of new incarnation since the start of uh, 2020. Um, an auspicious year in some respects and not in others. Um, and really, uh, we wanted to kind of get internet law and policy as a research area restarted at Strathclyde, which is a technology focused university. Um, so it makes sense for a technology focused university to also be doing um, kind of engaged research um, and policy oriented work on digital technologies. Um, so that we uh, restarted the center at the beginning of this year. Um, so far we've involved colleagues both from the law school. So the center is in the law school at Strathclyde. Um, we've involved colleagues from the law school, PhD students uh, mainly from the law school as well who are working um, in this area. Um, and also reaching out to some of our colleagues and collaborators, uh, particularly from computer science in Strathclyde, uh, who are all now members of the centre. Um, we hosted a, P a visiting PhD student from Italy, from the University of Macerata earlier this year, and we were looking forward to hosting more visitors, um, but then we all went digital. Um, so it's what our main activities this year have been um, actually hosting a series of webinars, uh, originally seminars, when we, we had like a couple in person at the beginning of the year, and since then uh, we've moved online. So we, uh, right now we're running a public webinar um, the first Friday of every month, um, which is open to anyone. And we also um, record, usually record it and make the recordings available on our YouTube page. Um, in terms of the kinds of uh, topics we look at, it's very broad so far. So uh, we have interest in competition antitrust online, um, data protection, privacy, uh, intellectual property, uh, general kind of regulation, telecoms regulation as well, actually, but kind of internet regulation. And I mean, something that we've been discussing, um, although it's not quite explicit on our website yet, is really kind of what our focus is. Uh, should be, and as we're based in Scotland and the only kind of in proper internet law and policy centre in Scotland, I mean, there are other centres, including part of the network, who do bits and pieces, um, but quite a few of them are quite uh, intellectual property oriented. Um, but yes, yeah, since we have a bit of a broader remit, um, and there's also quite a lot been happening with the devolved government here, in including in the context of the digital response to the pandemic, um, we did think that we should kind of orient ourselves a bit towards that, but we also have interests at the UK level, at the European level, and at the international level as well. Excellent. Thank you so much for that comprehensive answer. And uh, Oles, is there anything that you'd like to add to that from your perspective as a co-director of the Centre? Indeed, in addition to what Angela has mentioned already, uh, I think it is important to, to emphasize that we really welcome um, to attend our webinars. They are quite successful. We managed to generate very fruitful, open, productive, and really engaged discussion. We invite uh, really, uh, you know, uh, high level experts and it's, it's a very friendly and very informative e event. So every Friday, every first Friday of the month, uh, feel free to join us. 
also we uh, we participate in 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 various public consultations. We we produce papers uh, in response to, for example, European Commission um, public inquiries or competition and market authorities or or national governments. So we we try to to contribute to to the broader, you know, um, not not to limit ourselves to purely academic side of of of, of the issues and look also at the you know more you know contribution to, to, to society to broader to broader public involvement. Um, among other topics which which we cover in addition to what Angela has mentioned, uh, one of the most uh, problematic areas these days is the recent reform of uh, ex ante uh, regulation in the area of competition law in the European Union and attempt to introduce Digital Services Act and Digital Markets Act, new competition tool also uh, online platforms and digital advertising market study. So these areas which are topical everywhere um, uh, among the community of traditional competition law scholars and traditional internet law scholars, we are just in between of these areas and our expertise allows us to, to, to contribute meaningfully from both perspective, from the cluster of competition law and from the cluster of internet law. So I think that's that's great. That set of topics and the and the ones that you, Professor Daly, mentioned everything from as we think about telecom law to online privacy law to to um, thinking about antitrust and competition. These are very much in addition to internet governance and and commerce. These are very much core topic areas of many of the research centers within the global network of internet and society centers, and areas where there's so much interdisciplinary expertise. So it's not, um, it's very much people that are coming from disciplinary orientations such as law, but that do have lots of exposure to lots of disciplines um, as we think about these hard questions facing the digital age. And I'm also reminded of a large project that the network is running that's um, being essentially shepherded by the Humboldt Center, the Berkman Klein Center and the Digital Asia Hub on all things related to digital transformation and the eth and ethical questions around digital transformation. So we're taking a very um, broad umbrella approach to looking at digital transformation across sectors and industries and understanding what are the, the questions that we need to ask about impact on society. Um, so uh, uh, Oles, that was a really wonderful answer also to um, the next question that I was gonna ask and you're welcome to add on to it, but I'd also love to hear Professor Daly's response about what, what are you most excited about in the coming year? What are your plans and what would you like to see um, in the coming year? Recognizing that so many of our universities and contexts are disrupted by COVID, but I know that lots of work still goes on. So um, what gives you hope and what are you excited about? Uh, I think it's, it's obviously, uh, the, the overarching team which concerns uh, the, the issue which you just have mentioned is to observe how rapidly our public perception of the role of uh, the internet society is changing. And I think this transitionary, this you know, emblematic point was Cambridge Analytica scandal after which the critical mass in society, I don't talk about expert groups, I'm talking about the general perception of the role of the internet in society is changing and the pendulum is shifting in the opposite direction, probably a little bit excessively. We try to uh, attribute most of the vices to, uh, to, to those which we were glorifying just a few years or maybe decade ago. Uh, so it, it's interesting from the social legal perspective to observe uh, and try to comprehend and maybe somehow explain this, this uh, broader socio economic and maybe perhaps philosophical trend. This is one of the overarching themes which, uh, themes which concerns most of us, I understand. And more specifically, we are interested in the um, very ambitious and very far reaching attempts of the European Union, perhaps to try to catch up with this kind of global digital race. And um, we try to explain this uh, regulatory equilibristics, which uh, the, the, the European Union tries to introduce these days because it's a very, it's a very topical issue and in addition it's a very interesting issue. So it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's going to be, leaving aside all the difficulties and turbulences, uh, it's going to be quite an interesting and productive year. Anything you'd like to add to that? Um, sure, yeah. So I think from my perspective as, uh, well, the core 
co-director from the management perspective and administrative perspective, I'm kind of, well, it's been frustrating that some of our plans have not really come to fruition because of the disruption. Um, like Oles was saying, we're having, the webinar series is going very well, I, would, I think. Um, and one of the things which is good about it is being able to connect with people who are not kind of geographically close to us. So we've had people from like, lots of people that we know already um, who are part of our community um, attending and participating in our webinars, but also people from all over the world as well. Um, so it, there are there is kind of an upside to the disruption um, that we've kind of experienced from an operational point of view. Um, for, so I would like that to continue. And even if we are able to go back to kind of more in-person events, it would be really good to have some kind of hybrid online aspect. And I think this is something that will continue after um, COVID, if we ever get after COVID, if that ever occurs. Um, but and from a personal and sort of my own research um, and policy oriented uh, point of view, this coming year is going to be a really kind of interesting in all respects. You're also in the UK because we are, um, well, we have left the European Union and we're coming to the end of the transition period. So from the beginning of 2021, um, the UK, it seems, will be kind of out entirely um, and out of the kind of regulatory uh, regime of the EU. So kind of precisely what happens and what that means uh, for internet governance and policy is uh, something that I'm interested to see um, in the com and whether there will be like a free trade agreement with the US, whether the UK will be moving um, more towards the US on some internet governance issues will be um, something to watch or whether it will remain largely aligned with what is happening in the EU. And in any case, what happens in the EU will still have an effect on what happens here for a number of reasons. And also um, from the perspective of um, kind of the nations of the UK. So Scotland is one of the nations of the UK. Um, it's kind of a federal system, but kind of not. Um, but uh, what kind of is happening at this level as well is something um, I mentioned already that the pandemic response has been somewhat different, including uh, with regards to the digital aspects. We have um, a different app in Scotland, for instance, compared to England, and it's actually based on the Republic of Ireland app. Anyway, so how that kind of pans out, I think is going to be really interesting, whether we go down a kind of Catalonia route um, of <laughs> digital sovereignty and repression by the central state or not, um, whether it's something completely different, um, I think will be interesting, but I think already, so many interesting things, but I think already we're seeing kind of divergences with the pandemic response and I suspect that will continue for the foreseeable future. So these are the two things that I'm kind of interested in keeping an eye on um, and I think will impact a lot of our work quite a bit um, in terms of we've been uh, very oriented and we, I mean scholars in the UK have really looked quite a lot at and been intimately involved in EU discussions around internet governance and policy, but I think this may change a bit um, in the coming year. At the Berkman Klein Center, we also have a um, digital policy or digital pandemic working group that was formed earlier this year at the onset of the pandemic. And it's 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 so interesting how these really critical issues of importance to almost everybody in society intersect with digital issues in such interesting ways. So for us, we've had the ability and the opportunity, opportunity to work more closely with public health scholars and authorities with folks from medicine, with folks um, who are thinking about public infrastructure and, and deployment. And so it really is another one of these very um, interdisciplinary locations within our work of um, topics that are of interest to, of, of great interest to, and of great impact to um, society. Um, so my final question for you is really what, um, and you may have already kind of given us a preview, but what are some of the papers or programs that you might have in the pipeline or opportunities for um, opportunities for research that that your community is is working through? What are what are some of those um, things that again you're you're uh, probably working on right now or want to work on in the future? I guess we can tell you a bit about some of our personal stuff, but I think uh, we are trying to move towards kind of maybe more of a coordinated center 
I wouldn't say series of publications, but research. So kind of trying to combine uh, common um, topics of interest um, for ourselves and for particularly also the PhD cohort as well. But uh, honestly, I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, we're kind of still mostly producing sort of our own papers um, rather than court. So we can talk about that. Um, but I'm hopeful, I suppose, let's say, I think, I hope, um, you know, by the end of next year, we may have, you know, some more sort of center projects and be producing more stuff kind of together. Um, and that's part of our, that's been part of some of our discussions about like where we want to focus on essentially. Um, so I'm not really giving you a good answer to your question, but I don't, honestly, I, all this can maybe add or in, uh, he can give his own opinion on this, but I kind of think we're not quite there yet, but we can obviously talk about what we're doing as individuals. Um, but we have, um, we are growing though we've got more um, particularly PhD students joining us. So I think once, once we kind of have more people um, and more kind of discussions about what we all want to do, uh, I think we, I would hope we would be able to kind of produce <laughs> papers as a center and kind of activities as a center. And I know Olas, you want you want to uh, jump in, but just before you say that, I, I want to say that that's actually a great answer because all the research centers within the network are actually very differently configured, and some are have more an, of an individual contributor model, some have more of a collaborative model, and lots of things in between. And it's actually a real asset of the network and and the collaborative orientation of the network to, to help build that capacity at different centers. So if you are looking to go in a certain direction, say more collaborative research or enabling um, better training of PhD students and others in the pipeline, there's there's so much knowledge within the network that that's, that's a really key area where people can really connect with you, you can connect with others, and we can share a lot of information there. But um, sorry, I, I think I interrupted Oles from trying to jump in, so please do. I don't, I don't think, uh, thank you very much. I don't think I can uh, say, something very specific at this stage. Uh, what I wanted to, 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 to highlight is my observation that now we are in a kind of um, unfortunate position of refusing um, PhD applications from students who want to do PhD with us. It, we, there was a shortage in, uh, from when we started, but it, uh, this, this lacuna, this gap uh, has been filled in completely very quickly. And we are trying to expand because we feel and we see objective criteria that we, uh, we cannot meet the demand, um, both uh, in terms of PhD, but also LLM. Uh, so we have very, very busy uh, year uh, in front of us and uh, full of, of, of various uh, trajectories in which the center will be developing. So we are uh, very, enthusiastic and energetic and I think it's the most important thing we, we look in the same direction we coordinate our action harmoniously and it would be a pleasure to work with other centers on various on various occasions and that's why basically this is the main reason for us to to take part in this event and to say thank you for coming up with this fantastic initiative and for coordinating it in such in such a productive manner if I can add something also as well, I agree with everything Oles has said um, and also would like to thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't know how honest we're allowed to be, but um, I mean, we're running the centre on pretty much a zero budget. So um, I think that kind of limits, I, I think Oles was maybe hinting at some of the kind of resource limits. So we kind of have some human resource limits that we're only well, we're only a certain amount of people at a certain level of seniority as well. And so I, I guess across the network of centres, there are probably very different kinds of resourcing. I guess the Berkman Klein Centre is probably, by, my, my imagination is that it's very well resourced, but I'd say we're not so well resourced. So we kind of have to, um, we're sort of limited by that. And I think we are trying to um, become better resourced um, both in terms of human resources and also kind of money and finance. Um, but that is somewhat limiting of what we can do. And I think we're kind of interested in what can we do effectively with the kind of resources we have. And I think I'm particularly interested in learning from other centers about doing that and kind of going from being a fairly sort of like small 
and zero budget where we're doing, I think we're doing quite, I think anyway, I mean, others can judge, but I think we're doing a reasonable amount with the kind of resources we have, but I'm interested in sort of scaling up effectively in different ways, but that, that hasn't, as Ola said, that means that, um, you know, we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily able to take on all the PhD students that we otherwise might like to, and even just things like, um, we some, or at least I sometimes get students coming to me and wanting to kind of be involved in research projects and there's kind of a limit to co that kind of coordination because we just don't have the enough resources and um, so yeah I'm kind of I think that's a bit a big issue that we will be kind of working on more behind the scenes I guess in the coming year as well um, but certainly I think the more prominent our centre is um, and I think it's also becoming more prominent within our university too that's sort of good for getting resources. And, and that's absolutely one of the challenges that's shared across so many different centers who are in so many different contexts and regions and resource environments. Um, and, and even for the Berkman Klein Center or for the, and for the network of centers itself, this Ethics of Digitization project is probably the first grant that's really gone to the network of centers, even though it doesn't really exist as an organization, um, a, formal, a formally established organization, it's really a, ne a network. So this is one thing that absolutely others in the network and Berkman Klein and, and many others I know would love to contribute to in terms of that conversation and also to share what's worked and what hasn't. So that's, that's um, a great place, I think, to, to really end this conversation because it leaves us wanting more and to continue this conversation. I know that I'm eager to do that, but I'm so really appreciative of both of you to take the time, especially as I know it's late in the UK right now. Um, but thank you again, and we will connect again soon and um, deep appreciation from all of us at the Secretariat for the Network Centers.